<laughs> Not just the Mercy Watchers, but everybody. Hi, everybody. Today we have a very special privilege. It is an honor for me to welcome into the hot seat, <laughs> Father Dempsey. Father Dempsey... Rosales Acosta. Rosales Acosta. <laughs> Everybody just calls him Father Dempsey. Yeah, that is and he is a special joy for this university and for the world as a whole. As you can hear in a little bit, he'll tell you about some of his more recent travels. So welcome, Father. <laughs> Thank you. So Dr. good Lope. to see you today. <laughs> uh, so you were there for World Youth Day. Absolutely, oh, yes. Oh, great. Yes. So tell me, what were you doing there with uh, Fundacion Pane? Yes, I was one of the chaplains, but also I was doing presentations. So I did two oh. main presentations on the main scenario that was actually transmitted live through the uh, YouTube channels and all the social media of the foundation and, and Jesus film. And uh, I did one in English, one in Spanish from the main scenario. And uh, that was about the youth in the scripture. Mm -hmm. So I, I analyzed briefly. It was very, very short because that was the thing. We need to keep everything moving, you know, right. so in dynamic mode. Mm -hmm. And then one small presentation, one of the tents about uh, the notion of Mary and synodality. And um, apart from that, I was always there with the actual with the Cardinal mm -hmm. Ma Maradiaga, who was always there every day because he was doing ah. also presentations. Uh -huh. And Cardinal Maradiaga was um, was actually the 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 main head, uh, uh, the figure leader for the Foundation Pane in that particular event. And he was actually expo explaining every day the importance of uh, Christus Vivit with the young people doing right. symposiums and so on. So explain to us just in a synopsis, Christus Vivi. Yes. Christus Vivi is one of the pontifical documents in which the Pope says that the church has to be always young, always young, because Jesus is always young. And young doesn't mean that um, to fall into the temptation that everything has to be new, but also doesn't mean that to fall into the temptation that everything has to be old. So we need to find some kind <laughs> of a middle ground. And it's quite interesting. One of the things that he said in that particular document, Christus Vivid, is that the church has to be attentive mm -hmm. to do not become a sclerotic. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, a, like a, an old person that is afraid to go outside of the sacristy. He said, mm -hmm. he said, we need to actually enter into dialogue with everything that is in front of us, you know, especially what is new. Right. And do not reject everything that is new because it's new. Do not reject <laughs> everything that is, yeah, no, it's very interesting. And of course, you know, when you hear these kind of things can be mis misunderstood or right. can be mishandled or... You know, the interpretations can vary, but the intention is very good, though. Mm -hmm. It's true, though. So we need to be always young. For example, you're always smiling. So, and, and you know, yeah, <laughs> we, that, means, that, means, that means that you have a, a, a happy heart. A happy spirit is an indication of a healthy spirit. This is very important, no? So that is why Jesus is permanent, the, mm -hmm. young, the young Jesus. I never see. old, never, never past, is always present, and always. he's always eternal. Always new, but yet eternal at the same time. Exactly. So that is the paradox, Great. right? So you also mentioned something about uh, synod or synodality, oh, yeah. right? Talk yeah. to us a little bit about yes, that. Yes, that, my dear friend, that is, <laughs> <laughs> that is a hot topic. But ironically, the theme of synodality permeated all the messages of the Pope in this very specific World Youth Day. Uh -huh. This World Youth Day, according to my direct experience, is marked by this event that is going to happen in the month of October right. with the Synod of Synodality, mm -hmm. in which the main issue is that everybody participate in the way of the church. So, And that is something that the Pope was repeating in every single event in the World Youth Day, that the church, do, uh, the church does not exclude. It's a church for everybody, mm -hmm. for everybody. And everybody's welcome. And the church needs to embrace everybody. And that implies also different opinions, different ways of thinking, and different ways of living. And of course, of course, you say that sounds very beautiful. The problem is in the reality <laughs> <laughs> when we need to face that. And that mm -hmm. is exactly what is going to happen in October. In the Synod of Synodalities, you will find all the results all the ideas, all the data that was uh, collected 
for the last two years, mm -hmm. and it will be presented there, and it will be a great debate. And one, one of the things that they were talking about is that the Pope gave permission to non-priest voting members. Mm. So there will be a group of persons that are not priests, not cardinals, who actually will have vote. Wow, that's, that's kind of amazing. We have these two very sort of impactful events with yes. World Youth Day and now the Synod and Synodality coming within just a couple of months of Absolutely. each other. Absolutely. That is wow. why it, it seems like the World Youth Day was almost like a preparation uh -huh. for yeah. this Synod of Synodalities. So it sounds like your engagement specifically at World Youth Day with Fundacion Pene, uh, you mentioned YouTube channels and the screens and that sort of the quick... Um, presentations, all of that seems like it's targeted toward the younger audience, of yes. course. Um, but also, it sounds pretty, like, innovative, right? It's yes. sort of like you're trying to evangelize with new means. Yes. Perhaps. One of the things that it was fantastic there, and I was sharing this, and I, and I, I took videos, and I sent it to the, I, I posted it in Instagram, Facebook, and then through the University of St. Thomas. By the way, I was promoting the University of St. Thomas yes. every single Very day. Very good. Way <laughs> to go. Yes. <laughs> every single moment, every single time. It's, uh, it was a tent in the park. It's called Cenovio. The tent, okay. Uh -huh. and so in that tent, it's very long actually, maybe mm, thirty yards length. Wow. The length is very long, mm -hmm. very large. So you go at the beginning, and there is a place in which you have one side that is all screen, is green actually. It's like a green screen, uh -huh. and then a technological uh, screen in the other side. We chose the topic of Mary that encountered Elizabeth because that was the actually the the passage that is the lay uh -huh. motif for the for the word youth day you know mm -hmm. mary actually received the message got up and went without delay to see elizabeth so that was the lexio so up here the lexio and then we the people who go there they needed to dress as mary and elizabeth mm. and they go there and meanwhile the angel is saying that in this screen they they, they actually they have to personify it in the uh -huh. part that was green, and it will be projected in the other screen like a, oh, you know, a, live, a live movie. It's uh -huh. amazing. So yeah. that was a way how to do the lexio of mm -hmm. that particular passage. And it was music, and then they were dancing, and then it, it's... Um, and so the, the pilgrims this actually interact entered with this into the, story. the biblical passage. Exactly, but without using the imagination. <laughs> 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 Just literally with the, <laughs> with the screen. So it's fantastic. And uh -huh. then after that, that was like uh, maybe... Eight minutes, ten minutes, and then after that, they go to the next part, which is behind in the same tent, and there is another screen. But then up here, the angel comes, and 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 the background is Nazareth, and up here, the angel says, "Now, I would like to invite you to dance with me to praise the Lord." And the group is there, so one person has to go to the middle. There is one screen right there, one one camera mm -hmm. that perceives the movement. So, start the music, singing, praising to the Lord. And meanwhile, you are dancing. The angel is imitating you dancing. Ah. <laughs> it's fantastic. Nice. And then, yeah, but and the whole thing is the moment of prayer. So uh -huh. you pray, acting, interacting with the biblical text using the screens. And then the next one is praising the Lord, <laughs> giving thanks to the Lord by dancing with the angel. <laughs> that sounds incredible. Yeah, it was really nice. So <laughs> with all of that innovation, how would you describe innovation and and not only the definition that you bring to it, but how do we live it out if we don't have a 30-yard long <laughs> technology <laughs> carnival going on? Yes. For me, innovation is to make something new, even from, some, from things that may appear to be standard, mm -hmm. but may appear to be common. Uh, for example, yes, we can actually do an interaction with the movie no? using a text from the gospel, but at the end, that is what Ignatius of Loyola was saying, by the saying, we need to use the imagination. So instead of having the technology, you use the, the, your mind. Uh -huh. But it's exactly the same. The innovation is, that, that is you have the typical example, something that is old, right? but just with a little tweak, uh -huh. it becomes something oh, attractive because of the mindset of today. A new way of seeing something. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe we did it, like for example, um, it's quite fascinating to see uh, people that take pictures, right? 
So I take a picture of a rock, but then somebody will take a picture of the same rock from the, another angle, and that is a piece of art. Uh-huh. Meanwhile, my picture is a piece <laughs> of rubbish, but it's the same rock. <laughs> same rock. <laughs> the same rock. So that is why, uh, that is why innovation is it's a tricky word, because many people think, okay, something completely new. But actually, we don't have anything that is 100% completely new. Right. We need to build something new, always using the, the, the ground in which we stand. Mm-hmm. And then from there, depends on the angle, something incredible can come out. So you, you see the word itself, innovation. So the novation is something new, right? Exactly. But within. Exactly. Right? Rooted in some place. Yeah. Absolutely. So sort of what we were talking about earlier with the, with the young, the church is always young, but yet eternal. Absolutely. Right? It's, uh, the, it's the Catholic both and that well, we like to say a lot. Well, for example, some, sometimes you made me laugh. It's very common in these in this big corporations or even, mm-hmm. even in universities to have moments for mindfulness. Mindfulness. Okay, so okay. you go to one of the... I did. <laughs> so, okay, what is mindfulness? Okay, so feel your fingers. Okay, I'm feeling my fingers. And, and then try to be quiet. Don't think about problems. That so, one's hard for yeah, me. And then, then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then breathe and breathe and then... Let go. So, yes. Yeah, so it, they said, let us do 15 minutes of mindfulness. And they, everybody who works in a corporation, we have more productivity. So I did the mindfulness. I said, but that is, that is what we call in the tradition of the church to do reflection. That is a moment of reflection that, that I, I actually I isolate myself from the world that I have and try to focus myself in me with God or God with me, you know, in my interaction. Just that mindfulness, take God out of the equation. It's just about breathing mm-hmm. and isolating yourself. So, but that's supposed to be in vogue. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great deal of innovation to increase productivity. Right. And we have been doing that for centuries in the Catholic Church, but we don't call it like that. Well, right? it, it reminds me of a word, holy, right? Yeah, exactly. Which is set apart, yeah. right? Same idea. Absolutely. That doesn't seem all that new. <laughs> <laughs> but it certainly is, as you say, in vogue these days. Yeah. So, wow, that's, that's really cool. So tell me, um, you, you were over there in Portugal and you had all of these incredible experiences, it sounds like, and then you've come back over uh, to, to begin classes again at the University of St. Thomas. <laughs> that's yeah. right. <laughs> um, so you were also directing the Centro Semiero here. Yeah, that's right. So can, right. can you tell us a little bit about that and whether or not you think that is innovative, right? We see that the church itself is always new yet eternal. How does that fit into that whole discourse? Of course. Centro Semillero is the program that we have here at University of St. Thomas to give graduate programs in Spanish, 100% in Spanish, and it's 100% online. That is actually what makes it more attractive. And what kind of graduate programs are these? Yeah, we have two. One is for pastoral theology, which mm-hmm. was the first one. That was the pilot program. Yes. And got great success. Great, great success. The first year, the second year, until today. But because of that, we opened a second program, which is biblical, mm. uh, biblical, biblical theology. And ironically, in the United States, it's one of the very few biblical programs that exist in the United States. I'm, not, I'm talking here including Spanish and, and English. I don't think that even exists one in Spanish in the United really? States. Yes, because I have been Right here at UST, the Center Semiera. Yes, because I have been actually talking with nuns from Washington, D.C. and other universities that is, that, who speak English, that it's very hard to find good programs of biblical theology, mm-hmm. graduate programs in the United States. There are very few. And in, English, in Spanish, they are not. They yeah. are not. So... In the moment that we opened the program of biblical theology in Spanish, we have students from Peru, Argentina, Japan, Spain, um, different parts of the United States, uh, Panama, Costa Rica, uh, and you name it. And, uh, and, and practically because it's online, everybody's connected. Right. And of course, this actually is, is motivating also the Hispanic community, especially living in the United States, that they can mm-hmm. have a civil degree in theology that is not just only a certificate, because that is exactly right. what's going on. In the United States, many universities, they are promoting certifications you know, for mm-hmm. the Spanish community. Oh, yes, you do two or three courses, and you got a certificate, mm-hmm. a certificate. But it's different when you propose a, a graduate program you know, that has the same civil value that somebody who's doing a graduate program in sociology or mm-hmm. in education or in business. And that is a complete different ball game. 
And in that, yes, we are innovating. And now with this connection that we are trying to do with the Pontifical University in Mexico, that will increase. So wait, actually. wait, hold on. Now tell, me, <laughs> tell me just a brief, give me a brief on that one. So we've gone from Portugal and then you had a whole list of around the globe. And now we're, we're in Mexico. Tell me about that. Oh, that was something that was very providential. That began last year, actually. Yes. That um, through common friends, um, I began to have conversations with the rector of the Pontifical University in Mexico which is in Mexico City, mm -hmm. the Reverend Dr. Anguiano, holy man. And then we start to explore how we can grow together, how we can actually collaborate. And then slowly that conversation was developing another conversation and then in his team, and then I include actually Dr. Hans Doctor from the Department of International Studies of the University of St. Thomas, and then the visit and then planning, seeing how we can actually see the the collaboration with the Pontifical University, with Pontifical degrees, and we as a civil university. And now uh, we, are, we have developed a plan in three phases. Wow. Sounds like you are just super busy all the time. No. So do you ever have a chance to just kind of not be busy? And when that happens, <laughs> what do you, when that happens, if it happens, what do you do? You know, when I was in the seminary, always our schedules was always packed. And one of the things that my mentors and superiors they always said to us that they, they need us to keep us busy so we can sleep well. <laughs> 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 and in that way, when you are busy, you know, temptations usually tend to go away. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's um, that, that actually in, in many years of formation then as a priest it has been part of my nature. But uh, um I will rest when I will sleep forever, <laughs> like, you, know, <laughs> you know, in the presence of God. Right now, it's just that uh, if God gave the opportunity, why not? Mm -hmm. If God opens a window, why not to take it? Then the regret, I mean, uh, regret will come if I will be in the presence of God. And I say, I gave you that opportunity, that opportunity, that opportunity, and you didn't take it. Why? Oh, well, you know, uh, I was tired. <laughs> so I don't have, I cannot oh my say goodness. that. So if this opportunity came with, uh, and it's truly, I didn't uh -huh. look for it. Well, and you know, one of those opportunities that God gives us happened just today. Oh. Yeah. With you being here with us today <laughs> talking, Father Dempsey. So okay. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. For being yeah. here with us. It's and my pleasure. And God though. bless you. And God bless you. God Thanks bless for you. tuning in today.